Ken gets it for us or not. He's not in here, so I can say that. And uh, so bring some dishes to share, some desserts, some side dishes, that type of thing. Um, that will start directly after church. Um, also, in the same vein as food, Super Seniors. On Thursday of this week, you will be meeting at noon at the Olive Garden. So get with Mary. Let her know exactly how many are going to be there. If you're interested and you don't know who Mary is, track me down. I've got a big orange shirt. can't miss me. And I will point you in her direction or I'll get your information and share it with her. Um, a change in the bulletin. Uh, Wednesday night, men's Bible study. We are going to go on hiatus with that. Um, it, the attendance has been dropping, and so we're going to give everybody a break. If there is an interest and you would like to see that continue, let us know, and we'll move forward with that. It may not start up anytime soon, but we'll take a look at it. So if you're a man, you're interested in getting together with us, let us know, and we'll try to put something together. <coughs> Uh, car show. Let's go through some car show information. We had a meeting last weekend. I think that went relatively well. One of the things that came out of that is our shirt sizing seemed to be off a little bit last year. So Jay has been preemptive in that strike and he is going to try to have some shirts here next Sunday. Um, before, after service, <coughs> picnic, whatever it may be. Um, that will give you an opportunity to try on sizes because a lot of people were disappointed last year when they got their size and it didn't fit or what they thought was their size and it didn't fit. So he's going to have some shirts here to try on so when you order them you know what you're getting. We were scheduled for a board meeting to happen tomorrow. Now a couple weeks ago we moved that board meeting back a week. So it is not Monday. It is the 20th. Okay, so not tomorrow but eight days from now. So please make sure you update your calendars on that. Um, the shoe drive still going on for Shawnee for their outreach. Um, the Clark County Animal Shelter, there's a, there's a thing out there that's going to go on for the entire month of August, so stay with that. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Gift cards. Is Carla here today? No, I'm playing Carla. Okay, Reese is going to play Carla. If you have script stores, they are due in today. Um, this is another opportunity to buy gift cards. If you look in your bulletin, we're still looking for $25 gift cards to give away as prizes at our car show. So it's a great way to, to get the church twice the effort with that because we get a $25 gift card for the car show and the church gets money back from the scripts orders. Mark, just a point. If anybody wants to buy a gift card, give me the denomination you want on a piece of paper. You can write a check to North Hills Church. Okay, so we can take steps out of the process is what his point was with that. If you want to buy a gift card for the car show, you can just write a check to North Hills, write car show on the bottom of your check, and you won't even have to get the, the, the card from Carla and then take it to somebody. It'll just go directly to Beth, and then everything's taken care of. So, all right, well, with that, let's open the prayer today. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your church and our opportunity to be here. Uh, be with us as we go throughout our community. Help us to be a living part of your church, that people may see us and be interested in what's happening in our lives and want to be a part of it. Help us to reach out in our communities and our world. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We stand and join us in worship of our Father.
morning, everybody. Um, it's nice to see you all here. Um, now the time of the service where we like to share any praises we've had throughout the week or any prayer requests. So would anybody like to start us off with sharing this morning? Yes. Uh, I had gone through testing. They were testing for many different things. Uh, one of them was cancer. And everything came back negative. And she said, I'm excellent health. Yeah. Um, Tony went to the doctor on in Cincinnati on Thursday. They thought he was going to have to have back surgery, and the doctor said he does not need back surgery. Pray. <laughs> Prayers for all the kids going back to school this week. Praises for the parents. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, an update just for uh, I've, a few of you have asked me about our neighbor, the early lines. Um, his wife actually came home yesterday. So that's, you know, they were in a place where they were afraid she had given up and was never going to make it back to her home. But she did come home yesterday, so keep that in your prayers. Things go well. Okay. Um, my, she was my roommate when her first year at Northwestern, Cindy Sharpmack. She had a baby last Monday. Um, her name is Naya. Uh, but she was born blue and purple in color. Um, they found pulmonary hypertension. So she has been in the NICU and yesterday was moved to the step down where she only has oxygen that's on the wall instead of the ventilator. So that's a definite praise that her baby is is moving forward. Not sure if pulmonary hypertension when you're born as a newborn with that high blood pressure, if that stays with you. Um, but just prayers that for the improvement and they're talking about sending her home today, so. Great. Anybody else that would like to share? Any unspoken special hands? Okay, you join me in prayer. Father, <laughs> firstly, I just want to thank you um, just that you can bring us together um, on these Sundays and throughout the week and giving us this opportunity first to praise you, to worship you. Uh, we know it is a praise and not everybody gets that opportunity. We ask that you hear our voices this morning with these praises. Uh, there were quite a bit this week and we're so happy and thankful for that. Uh, we ask that you also hear our concerns and our prayers. Uh, be with these families that are suffering loss or whether it be cancer or uh, related or other, um, those who are fighting, I pray that you're just with them, comfort them, give them strength, and give their family strength as well. Uh, for we all look to you and all that we do. Let us as a church and families support them, and may we all continue to grow closer to each other, most importantly, close, closer to you. Uh, be with us as we continue to worship this morning. Be with John as he brings the message. Uh, open our hearts and, and our minds as we listen. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Uh, now is the time where we present his tithes and our offerings. If you join me again in prayer, Father, thank you as you continue to bless us as a church, um, 
Thank you for what you've given to us individually and as a, as a church family and body. Um, I pray that we can give back what is already yours this morning. Uh, fill our hearts with kindness, love, and compassion so that we can do that. And may the church receive these gifts and do your will with them. Uh, in your son's name we pray again. Amen.
everyone here today. A nice packed house. Somehow half my sermon disappeared. I don't know, it's probably laying on the floor over there somewhere. I don't know. Is it laying over there? I don't know. I could probably fake my big throat, but I don't want to do that. So, oh, there it is. Come back here. I wonder if uh, any of the heroes of the Bible they ever lost their notes, you know, before they got up to speak. I don't know. When I was a kid, I told you last week that uh, I've, I've mentioned this before, just just being silly and all. Bigfoot and I have a thing going back like almost 50 years now. He has always uh, scared the pants off of me in the, at night, and you know, and I've always uh, you know always go around kind of half-heartedly. I'm always on the look for him. We went to uh, South Carolina. We were going around this uh, big pond, and I'm, I texted my friend back home and said, I'm squatching. I'm, I'm looking for him. You know, I'm going to find him. And after 50 years, I'm finally going to find him. But when I was a little kid, I mean, I would lay awake at night, and I would be scared to death. I'm just sure he was going to look in that window, and that would be it. I just, ah, that would be it. everything. And it got to be a problem because almost every night I would... I barely remember this, but apparently I would get out of bed and I would always wake my parents up. And you, you don't want to get woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning every night. You know, some little kid in there, you know, you, you come look, in the, look out the window there and see what, you know, see what's going on out there. And like, there's nothing there. My mother was always very sympathetic. My dad would lay there. Well, you go to bed. <laughs> there's nothing out there. You're going to have a lot, something worse to worry about than Bigfoot if you wake me up again. And, you know, so, so I'd go back to bed later. You know. Well, somewhere along the line, my dad started to leave me little messages. He, uh, he always worked, uh, uh, it seemed like when I was little, he always worked in the day. So I'd wake up, he wasn't there. I uh, wouldn't get home until in the evening. So I didn't get a chance to talk to him a whole lot. But he, somewhere along the line, he started leaving me these secret coded messages. And what he would do is he would take a piece of paper and he would hold a mirror up to it and he would write, you know, so that in the mirror it, it appeared correctly. But if you looked at it on the paper, it was all backwards and jumbled and weird looking and that became our thing. It was like, I'd always wake up and look, and look for Dad's coded message. He'd leave me a little message or something. And I remember him telling me, John, there, you know, I would read this, there's no such thing as, as uh, you know, Bigfoot lives in big forests and mountains. And we live out here in Champaign County. There aren't any big mountains or there's no forests around here. The Loch Ness Monster, he lives, in a, he lives in a big lake in Scotland. There aren't any big lakes around here. I'm thinking, what about Kaiser Lake? <laughs> he, he <lived> <laughs> only four or five or five or six at times. So. Anyways, he kept leaving me these secret coded messages and and it got my attention. It was something I looked forward to. It was also something that it brought me a lot of reassurance. I don't know why him threatening me didn't reassure me, but uh, you know, reading it in a message, you know, that was cool. And so I would read that. And he kept me looking forward to getting these messages, and it got my attention. And I used to do the same thing with my kids then. When they were little, I'd leave them little messages around. You know, in God's Word, we read of several ways that, that the Lord chose to speak to people. And speaking to many of the, the prophets, and to other, he used visions. He sometimes sent an angel. He even used a donkey in the case of Balaam. I mean, he always had some way to get people's attention and to, uh, you know, to, to convey his, his idea or his word, whatever it was. Now, my dad couldn't make a donkey talk. He, he certainly couldn't send an angel, but he could leave me little messages that got my attention and in the Bible, one of the most fascinating examples of God getting someone's attention, it has to be the burning bush with Moses. Now, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 3. 
we'll be looking at you know, the story here of the burning bush. Just a little bit about Moses in the early days here. Uh, and uh, what we're going to, to, to be looking at today really is this idea that God chose that vehicle to get across a very important message to Moses. This was so important, God had to make sure I'm going to get your attention, and boom, and off we go. So in Genesis, or excuse me, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 uh, through, uh, oh, let's see, 14 or 15 here, I'll read along. Uh, you know, keep in mind before this, Moses, of course, had been raised in Egypt, he had lived a life of luxury, probably had a life of power as sort of the adopted in the Pharaoh's family there. But eventually he had a run-in with some people. He broke, he ended up killing somebody. Uh, he was afraid to get found out, so he ran. And so off he goes to the land of Midian, where he became a shepherd. That's a lot different than living in the, in the house of Pharaoh and in Egypt. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was pasturing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he fled, excuse me, he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. Probably wouldn't have been anything unusual to see something burning, but even today we're driving around the countryside and the kids are like, look, look, there's a fire over there. Look at all the smoke. But we ought to drive over there and see a bunch of rubberneckers, you know, looking at them. <laughs> Anyways, Moses sees this sight, he, and after, I'm sure, a few moments of looking at the bush, he's like, man, that thing is not burning up. It's burning all right, but... Hey, what are they using that thing? You just keep, well, up it goes. Well, so verse 3, Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he, also, and he said also to Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face where he was afraid to look at God. You can imagine Moses being afraid. He'd grown up in the house of Pharaoh. The Pharaohs worshipped false gods. If you know anything about Egyptian mythology, you know, I, uh, oh, I forget the names of them, but they had lots of different gods. You know, the cat gods and the, the whole thing. Moses would probably have been raised up into that culture. He found out eventually he was a Hebrew. But now here he is face to face with the one true God who had gotten his attention through this burning bush. And God goes on and explains to Moses, look, I, I, I've seen what my people are going through. They're going through a lot of affliction in Egypt. They've been... Uh, slaves there, and I'm going to do something great. I'm going to bring them out of Egypt. <clears throat> Guess what, Moses? You're the guy that's going to do it. You're the guy that's going to do it. Verse 11, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring out the sons of Israel out of Egypt? you got to be crazy, God. You want me? I've been hiding out in the desert for 40 years. I've been leading sheep around. And you want me to do it? Verse 12, and he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I'm going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now, they may say to me, What is his name? What shall, what shall I say to him? In other words, who, they're going to ask me, who, sent, who is it that sent me here to bring him out of Egypt? 
Verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am who I am. A very important phrase found in, in the Word of God. Before anything else, Moses needed to know that God was real. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was the one true God. You know, all religions have some kind of a deity. It's very natural for mankind throughout all of history to believe in some kind of a God. That's not unusual at all. It's more, in fact, it's, it's probably more unusual for people to not believe in any God. Atheists and things like that. I mean, they, they would be the uh, ones that would be exceptional in that. You know, to some people, God is a, he's the great spirit. To others, he's a, he's a, he's a fat man sitting cross-legged outside of a temple someplace. Uh, uh, God uh, appears in all different kinds of ways, some people say. But in Christianity, before we can even think about stating our faith about salvation, about forgiveness, about leading people into a growing relationship with Christ, we have to confirm in our minds, first of all, whether or not there's a God in the first place. And I would hope that everyone here this morning, you, you accept that fact, that yes, there is God. But not just any God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who said, I am who I am. You know, I am. Not, not I was. Not I used to be. Not I might have been. Not I am the God who meant to. He addresses himself as I am who I am. It points to the fact that God is and has always been God. He's eternal. That is very difficult for us as people to, to think about. Eternal? I mean, our life is a series of little events. You look out throughout history, you know, the whole span of it, it's just, is there a beginning? Is there an end? What is this thing called eternity? It's very difficult for us to wrap our minds around. But God very boldly, before Moses says, look, before anything else, Moses, you're here arguing with me about going to Egypt. I get that. But you need to understand, I am who I am. I am God. I have always been God. I will always be God. I am the God of your fathers. I'm the same God throughout all of the ages. God's name is almost translated, almost always translated Lord in the English Bible. When you read through here, you get to the word Lord, especially in the Old Testament. Well, Lord is an English word. But the Hebrew word would be pronounced something like Yahweh. You've heard of the word Yahweh. And that's built upon the word for I am. Now to many Hebrews, to many Jews, the word Yahweh is too holy to even pronounce or to even to write. I mean, when they write it, sometimes it's abbreviated. In fact, they, uh, in other places, uh, they'll uh, combine the Hebrew word Yahweh with the divine name Adonai, and it'll come up with a word similar to Jehovah, which you probably have heard that as well. But the whole point of this is that in God's very name, it reminds us of God's eternal nature. He, he simply is. He just is. He's always been. He will always be. I don't understand that. To me, everything has a beginning. Everything will eventually have an end. Not to God. He's always existed. I don't understand it. I don't know how that happens. But I know when I think about God, that brings me a lot of comfort. It brings reassurance to me to know that the God of the past is the God of now, is the God of the future. God is eternal 
in nature. It's good to know that there's something in this world besides change that is, that's permanent. There's someone you can count on. You know, that someone is the unchanging God of the Bible. The same God who existed before time began is the same God who lives in your hearts today. He's the same God who, who will be in existence forever. That brings a lot of comfort to me. Sometimes I wonder about when I, when I take my eyes off of God and I look at the news and I look at what's going on around me and I wonder, where are you, Lord? What's going on? <coughs> There's a lot of things happening. Where have you been? But I'm reminded that the same God who had the love to send His only Son to die in my place, uh, that's the same God of today, of, of for the future. The same good God who loved me in the past enough to send His Son to die for me, for all of you. He's still here. He has not changed. The God of the past is the God of today. He has not lost His power. His wisdom has not diminished. His love for us has not burned out. It will not burn out for you. He was and is, he'll always be the same God. Who is God? I am who I am. When uh, a guy by the name of Lloyd Douglas, he wrote a book called uh, The Robe. When he was a university student, he lived in a boarding house. And downstairs lived an elderly retired music teacher who was unable to leave his apartment. So Douglas said, look, every morning he'd, have a, he'd go down there and check on the guy, and he would come down the steps, open the old man's door, and ask, well, what's the good news? And the old man would pick up his tuning fork, tap it on the side of his wheelchair, bing, and he said, that's, that's middle C. It was middle C yesterday. It's middle C tomorrow. It'll be middle C a thousand years from now. The tenor upstairs sings flat. The piano across the hall is out of tune. But that, my friend, is middle C. It doesn't change. You know, one word that is used to describe God is the word um, immutable. And that's a, I tell my kids, that's a fancy word. And uh, you don't have to turn here. In fact, I'm going to. The, the word immutable is, is defined as not capable of changing, not susceptible to changing. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 29 kind of speaks to this a little bit. Samuel was, uh, well, was, was, uh, was talking to Saul and... He says, also the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind. Talking about God. For he is not a man that he should change his mind. It's good to know that through all the changes that we deal with in life, God's not changing. In fact, it's impossible for him to change. He's God yesterday. He's God today. He'll be God a thousand years from now. Time does not work against him. He's not subject to the same rules that we are. His love has never failed. It has never changed for you. His power has never diminished. And interestingly, neither does it have any reason to grow or to get better. God doesn't need to make himself more powerful. God doesn't need to will himself to love you more. There were times my kids screwed up bad, and I'd, I'd be so angry with them. I'd be like, man, you taking everything I can right now to, to yeah, I love you anyways. Boy, I'd like to wring your neck. <laughs> but I'm willing myself to be a good dad, you know. Uh, God doesn't have to do that. He doesn't remind himself in the morning, I better love these people more today. His love never changes. It never has changed. And God hasn't lost any wisdom. 
He doesn't need to gain any more. He doesn't have to become more holy. He's always been holy, perfectly holy. There's no room or need for improvement. He doesn't grow, he doesn't weaken, he doesn't decline. He's always been, and he always will be. And will always have the power. God looked at Moses and said, I am. I am the God of your fathers. I'm the same one now. I'm the same God that's going to be with you when you go before Pharaoh. I'm the same God who will send his son Jesus. I'm the same God who will be you know, with my church throughout all of human history. I'm the same God who will be over the kingdom that will have no end. I am who I am. That's something we can always count on. I'm a big uh, electronics freak. My poor wife, she, she hates the store Best Buy. She hates that store <laughs> with a passion. How much money have I wasted in that place? All these gadgets and stuff. Got to give her. If you know anything about technology, within about six months, what's happened? It's gone. It's changed. Get a new computer. Wow, this is great. And within two or three months, you're like, man, something better. Just why didn't I wait a little bit longer? Something better was always coming along. God's not like that. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. We had a football coach one time, head football coach, years, a few years ago, been more than a few years ago. You never knew from day to day what you were going to get with this guy. Some days he was. Hey, how you doing? You know, big cup almost. He, the kids would come in, he'd tease the kids. Oh. Next day he'd come in and he'd think, Woody Hayes rose from the dead. <laughs> the kids didn't know how to act around him. The coaches didn't know how to act around him. And they got into, hey coach, how you doing today? You know, you were hoping it was the good coach, not the, get in here, we got things to do. You know, you never knew. <coughs> God's not like that. Our God is not like that. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. He doesn't change. And very interestingly, and I, I'm not going to try to beat a drum here or anything, many of our Trinitarian friends point out that Jesus referred to himself as I am. And I've had many people, you know, Look at some of my ideas about the Old Testament and say, yes, that's right. But here, let's look at the New Testament. Let's see what Jesus had to say. Here we go. Okay, so if you would, open up your Bibles to John chapter 8. Very briefly, I want to look at something here because I think it's important. John chapter 8. Now many uh, of my Trinitarian friends, who I love, and I think their faith is valid. I'm not one who gets into the old, they're not going to the kingdom. You know, I don't, we can have that debate later, but many used uh, some of his words here in John to, as evidence that Jesus was claiming to be Yahweh, that Jesus himself was saying, I am who, who I am. I'm the, the, the God who talked to Moses. Well, John chapter 8, we'll start in verse 48. Well, there's been a big argument going on here. Jesus and the uh, Pharisees have been having it out again. And the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not rightly say that you're a Samaritan and have a demon? Talking to Jesus. <laughs> Isn't it true that you're a demon? <laughs> Jesus says, Look, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father. And you dishonor me. But I do not speak my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Well, that, that sets him up. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and the prophets also. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he'll never taste death. What about those guys? Surely you're not greater than our father Abraham who died. The prophets died too. Who, who do you make yourself out to be? Who are you really, Jesus? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. 
It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he, meaning the Father, is our God. And you have not come to know him, but I know him. And if I say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you. But I know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham. But Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Therefore they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So here we go. we got a big fight going on. Many people look at this and say, well, this is evidence. Jesus is claiming to be God the Father himself. Verse 58 is a verse that many suggest is Jesus actually proclaiming to be Yahweh. Now, the Greek phrase for the word I am, you're going to have to bear with me here. Right, I got most of it. I see a few of you nodding no. off. Some of you are always coming up to me. Now, you need to wake me up if I start to. Uh, so I'm going to start calling some of you out back there. Demi, you wake. All right, Dan, you, you, you. She's, she's in there. All right, we're all in the game here. Okay. The Greek phrase for I am, the Greek, uh, Eric, a lot of this would be uh, what the New Testament would be written in. Okay? And the, the phrasing here is ego emi. Ego emi, that's the Greek. Which literally means, I am he. Now, who's this he? Okay, the Hebrew phrase back in Exodus that we talked about, and this, uh, I always got a kick out of this, uh, but the Hebrew words for I am is Yah, I don't know if I was going to screw that up. Ha Yah, I keep wanting to go, Yeehaw. It's not Yeehaw, it's Ha Yah. All right, that's the, the Hebrew phrase. Which, literally means coming to pass, to fall out, continually becoming. In other words, always existing. The Greek phrase for I am, ego in me, refers to being existence at that moment. It does not carry the connotation of eternality. In other words, Jesus is saying, look, before Abraham was born, I am. In other words, I would come into existence at some point in time. Not then. You said it yourself. I'm not even 50 years old. I was born, you know, 32 years ago. I came into existence. You go back and you look at the book of John, the entire argument throughout the entire book of John points to Jesus as not being God, but Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is essentially claiming that before Abraham was born, I was coming into existence. Not I wasn't there yet, but I was coming into existence. In other words, I didn't exist forever. I haven't always existed. Only God is eternal. At some point, the idea of me, Jesus, came into the eternal God's mind. After that, the plans to put my existence into motion came into being. So before Abraham was even born, God had decided that I would be the Son of God. I would be the Messiah. And that's a summation of the whole argument that runs throughout the book of John. I don't say a whole lot about, you know, some of our distinctive doctrines, but I am thankful that the people who are our forefathers in the church of God, of the Abrahamic faith, take the time to look very, very carefully. What does the scripture actually say? Not what do I want it to say, not sort of what everybody else thinks, I'm looking at this word, one suggests God lives forever, the other word suggests I came into being at a certain point. And you may say, who cares? Wow, what a neat theological argument you just made there. Nobody got saved over that. 
I don't know if any of you got reassured over that. I don't know if any of your needs got met over that. But I find it very reassuring that Jesus, my Lord, my, my Savior, my Messiah, declared that God always has been in control. He has always had a plan for the salvation of mankind. Before Abraham existed, God had a plan for us because He loves us. And God who is in control... He's in control now, Jesus said at this time. God will be in control in the future. Despite the brutality of man's history, God can remain above it proclaiming, I am who I am. Despite all our attempts to destroy ourselves, God stands above all for all time. And the greatest reality of that, despite God's omniscience, his all-knowingness, his omnipresence, his ability to be everywhere at one time, his omnipotence, his, the great power that he has. Despite all of that, we are still loved. We are still cared for. His love for you has never diminished. It will not diminish. We are still important to the mind of God. We are still his greatest creation. All of you are special people. You're all created from the same God who has always been, who will always be. The same God who is here today. Now, I'm not sure where God has found you this morning. I don't know what kind of day you're having, what kind of week you went through. It's kind of interesting. I've noticed something over the last year and a half since I've been doing this. Whatever I preach on, the following week I tend to have to deal with. <laughs> and I, that bothers me. Last week, God is good. He has blessed us. But guess what kind of week that we had last week? It wasn't that good. About a month ago I prayed that you would stand firm. Stand firm. And guess what? I stood firm by the firm as a wet noodle last week at times. Maybe I should be like the prosperity people and preach money here. Maybe I'll get lucky and get, get the jackpot. If you tithe 10%, God will bless you. Look, I don't know where you're at this morning and I don't know what you've been going through. But like Moses, before we do anything, before we go to God in prayer, before we go out to live our lives, we have to first find God. Now, I wish He would appear to me in a burning bush. I think that would be cool. I'd love to see that. Okay. When I was a kid, I was a kind of a pyromaniac. I used to love to burn things. Yeah. It's like a bad episode of Beavis and Butthead. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Burn this. Throw it in. Your you know, look at this lawn chair. Throw it in. You know, whatever. <laughs> but like Moses, we should first go back and start with the fact that, yes, God exists. He has always existed. He always will exist. So wherever you're at this week, go before the God who who declares himself to be, I am who I am. I am the God who has always existed, who exists today, who will exist in the future. I'm not changing. Let that be a source of strength and comfort that your God, my God, he never changes and that he loves us just the way we are he made a plan for us. He has a future for us. My God is in control. I'm not in control, hardly ever in control. But my God is. And he doesn't change. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for this day, for all of these people. Lord, we love this church. And I love that you've, you've blessed us. and Help us to grow, to reach people for Jesus. 
to take those who are here to lead them into a growing relationship with your Son who you gave to us to be our Messiah. Father, we love you today. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, broke it down very simply for us. We worship a God who will love us forever without condition. <clears throat> and it's just so wonderful to be able to come to that Father who loves us without condition with, with our songs of praise and, and with our love and with our hearts. Um, and no matter how many times we turn away from that Father, we back and he'll love us just the same because he remains he remains still and he remains steadfast so would you uh, stand and we're going to close out our service with simplicity coming to our God with a simple song in simple faith just believing that he is always there and we will
at you and we're thankful. And it's, it's hard for us sometimes to remember that you're the same God who parted the seas, created this universe, the God who sent his son, the God who is still active in our lives today, the same God who has a future for us and an eternity. Lord, it brings me great comfort to know that you're not changing. As everything else around us changed, you're not changing. That gives me hope and that gives me strength. Father, bless this church as we thank you together today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, have a great week. See you next Sunday.